so today my topic of discussion is the cryptococcus which is a opportunistic mycosis in my earlier video i have described about the candidiasis which was my first uh, lecture on the opportunistic mycosis and in my uh, next videos i will be describing about the um, the zygomycosis and the aspergillosis which are the other two uh, opportunistic mycosis so with all those all these four organisms uh, our uh, fung mycology will end so uh, starting with the cryptococcus today so the two most important species of the cryptococcus which are concerned with causing the human infection are the cryptococcus neoformans and the cryptococcus gatti these are the two important species of the cryptococcus which are causing the infection and the most important infection that the cryptococcus cause is the cryptococcal meningitis this is what the cryptococcus is famous for so let's start with the risk factor of the uh, crypto cocus infection so risk factor since uh, we all know from the classification that the cryptococcus is a opportunistic uh, uh, infection okay so I, i mean it causes opportunistic infection so the risk factors will be the same i have described in the candidiasis that means a b c d what was that i described in the candidiasis so that was a for age in elderly there is decreased immunity so they are at higher risk of infection with these opportunistic uh, agents and b for the broad spectrum antibiotics use so with the use of the broad spectrum antibiotics the uh, you know the immunity of the person gets reduced so that is also reducing the um, immunity and c for the corticosteroids therapy so we all know from pharmacology that uh, corticosteroids reduces immunity so here also since uh, with the corticosteroid therapy the immunity gets reduced so the uh, person becomes uh, prone to get infection with the cryptococcus and d for the decreased immunity with various reasons like hiv infection or immunosuppressant drug those may be a reason for the decreased immunity other than that the diabetes mellitus okay that is also a important risk factors and a very frequent risk factor that we see in the indian population so these are all the four risk factors for the opportunistic infection that is the cryptococcus meningitis or the cryptococcal infection so the clinical manifestation if we talk about the clinical manifestation of the cryptococcus so cryptococcus does not only cause the meningitis it causes some other infections also but it is famous for the meningitis you should know that and the other infections that the cryptococcus cause rather the first infection that the cryptococcus cause is the pulmonary cryptococcus but that is not so much of importance for us because that may be tackled uh, okay if it spreads to the uh, meninges and it causes the cryptococcal meningitis then it sometimes uh, it becomes very difficult for to difficult for the doctors to handle the situation okay so cryptococcal meningitis uh, and also in and that also in the immunocompromised person so in the immunocompromised person this becomes very fatal condition and this cryptococcal meningitis may present with the headache and neck pain the fever cranial palsy these are all the typical features that we see in the meningitis cases so uh, yeah, you cannot by the uh, by the you know by the clinical features you cannot differentiate that whether it, whether it is a uh, cryptococcal meningitis or any pyogenic meningitis or a tubercular or the viral meningitis it can be anything so you have to go for the csf culture uh, csf culture and the csf microscopy then all then only can you you can uh, diagnose it a case of the cryptococcal meningitis meningitis otherwise the symptoms are same for all the cases of the meningitis next is the that the cryptococcus can also cause the skin infections okay let's talk about the lab diagnosis and then i will tell you that what is the uh, most important point about the cryptococcus that you should not forget so in the lab diagnosis it will start with the specimen collection as usual so we will collect since it is causing most commonly the meningitis rather the first infection is the pulmonary but most commonly it causes that pulmonary pulmonary cryptococcus may resolve on its own or with the medication but uh, if it spreads to the meninges that will become very fatal and very dangerous situation so uh, that um, mening uh, meningitis cases needs to be evaluated okay and for that we have to aspirate the csf we have to uh, you know collect the csf by lumbar puncture and also we can use the blood where we can use to detect the uh, uh, organism or the fungi so uh, first we will do the direct detection with the csf how can we do that so that is done by the negative staining by modified india ink 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 stain 
and uh, through that uh, staining we can see there there the refractile clear space surrounding the round budding yeast cell okay this is the typical characteristic finding that we see in the case of the cryptococcal meningitis so if you uh, ask me to uh, uh, to what should you remember uh, for your pg exams and from uh, exam points of view is this point okay this point is very important this point should be remembered if you cannot remember whole about the uh, cryptococcus meningitis then this parts you should must remember okay and then comes the gram staining so gram staining when we do the gram staining we see the gram positive round budding yeast cells this may also be helpful in diagnosis of the cryptococcal meningitis and then we can obviously do the culture for the cryptococcal meningitis okay and we do the culture on the cerebral dextrose agar at 37 degree centigrade where we can get the creamy white mucoid colonies where we can get the creamy white mucoid colonies and then uh, comes the special media that we can use for the culture of the cryptococcus now this is not important from university exam point of view this is important from the uh, pg exam point of view so you can remember or you may leave it also these are the two special media that is the niger seed agar and the bird seed agar media they are used to demonstrate the melanin producing ability of cryptococcus now since the cryptococcus has the property to produce melanin produce the melanin pigment so these uh, these uh, you know these uh, culture medias are used to uh, uh, demonstrate the melanin producing capability of the cryptococcus and by that we can diagnose the cryptococcus and then uh, there we see the brown colored colonies okay since it is producing melanin so melanin will be brown color we all know the melanin is brown color so melanin will be uh, since melanin will be produced so that will be a brown colored colonies that will be produced on these culture media niger seed agar and the bird seed, bird seed agar so these uh, is all about the cryptococcus okay so uh, we have talked about cryptococcus this part you should must remember that's all for cryptococcus